episode 46. Food is the great equalizer. Well, everybody will come together over food. And you can put together like Jews and Arabs and they'll come together over hummus. It's like, mine's better than yours. Okay, well, mine's better than yours. But, but if we do this one, that's the best. It's like, okay, whatever. This episode is sponsored by Aura Organic and Touch Bistro. Hello, everybody. Hello, Forkers. Welcome back to another episode of the Just Forking Around podcast, where I, Debbie Salzberg, your host, showcase a rotating cast of guests, all pivotal players from the beautifully insane, sexy world of food and beverage. And today, episode 46, you are about to listen to my next guest, who is David Pissarra. Now, David Pissarra, he wears many hats. He is, first and foremost, he is a father's rights lawyer. But he dabbles in some other cool food things. For example, he is a columnist at a great uh, Santa Monica Daily Press, a great circulation, a great newspaper here in Santa Monica. David Dines is his column. He sprinkles in um, restaurants, uh, experiences uh, coupled with some other meetings that he goes to, which is really cool because he always incorporates food if he's at a meeting somewhere and writes about it or if he's at a, you know, an event. So definitely check out his column. And funny story about David, we met at Toastmasters International. And if you're thinking, huh, she hasn't been in a while. <laughs> That's not true. Of course I've been. Of course I've touched up on my public speaking and my ums, ers, and ahs. No, but seriously, Toastmasters is awesome. I highly recommend. There's chapters all across the world. So all you have to do is Google Toastmasters and find a chapter in your area. And it's a club. You go a few times and then you can get, quote, voted in. And then you just pay a small dues. And it's a weekly uh, meetings that are held. And you get to, you know, practice your public speaking. And there's different roles that you can participate in during the meeting. It's, it's, I highly recommend it. I mean, if you want to up your game in public speaking, or if you just want to feel more comfortable, perhaps on like a Facebook Live, or maybe giving a presentation for, for work, or Instagram stories, you know, I love Instagram stories, then <laughs> I really highly recommend Toastmasters. David, he also is a, he competes uh, at a national level, I, mean, I think international level for Toastmasters, he's up there. I mean, the guy, he's an amazing speaker. He's he's so engaging and his stories are compelling and he's so quick. Um, I really have enjoyed watching him and listening and watching him speak, which I know watching, but there's different uh, purposeful movements of the body, working the room, eye contact, pausing. So there is a visual to the public speaking as well that one learns. It's in posture, how you stand. So interesting. So he, right now, I think as we speak, he was asked, as I'm speaking, he was asked to participate in a conference in New Zealand. So I believe he's in New Zealand right now. So he's uh, on the other side of the world. But what's so cool about podcasts is he can listen to this podcast. <laughs> Everybody in the world listens to podcasts and uh, just forking around, um, New Zealand is, I think, number four for listenership uh, or five in countries because I have a demographic on my back on the back office part of my website. So it's really cool. Um, I want to give you a little bit of some intel on what's incoming for the Just Forking Around podcast shows. I've just uh, completed the part, almost almost completed um, a series of female distillers and women-owned distilleries all across the country. I'm so excited. So uh, starting at the end of February, you're going to hear a four-part series of different female distillers and their whole trajectory. And these stories are so compelling. They're so interesting. They're not all in, say, for example, Kentucky. Maybe when you think of bourbon, you think of Kentucky. Um, they're from all over the country. So I purposefully chose these women to uh, participate in this series and it's going to be exciting and fun. And I hope you learn a lot because I learned so much and I definitely want to plan a trip to Kentucky. I just think that's going to be so cool to go to the, to the land of bourbon of our country. But you know, and that's there and there's, there's some that focus more on rum. There's women in New York focuses on rum and some people are more into the vodkas and 
Yeah, I don't want to give away too much because I... I'm excited for you all to listen. And then there's going to be another series coming up of uh, female executive chefs here in LA. So stay tuned for that. I'm also going to be doing some more live events. Those are always super fun. And I think it's time to introduce you to this next episode with David Pissara. Please enjoy. Hanging with David Pissara. That is what is happening today. Off scripted, not really sure exactly what direction this will take, but I can assure you all, it is going to be like eating your favorite piece of pie or perhaps as soothing as a burger and a chocolate shake. All of which, by the way, David Pissara is known to be quite the expert. Now, little did David know that those days working in the 80s at the Hamburger Hamlet would have led him to this level of success. And I don't mean in the world of like burgers, too many burgers to try, so little time, or how comparing local Los Angeles key lime pies to maybe his top pick in Naples, Florida. I'm referring to the many hats he dons. Columnist, author, speaker, podcaster, filmmaker, father's right lawyer. David Passara, welcome. (laughs) Wow, I am blown away. (laughs) Talk about doing her homework. (laughs) Or should I, or should you say welcome? Because I'm I am in your um, at your place in your office. So thank you for having me. My pleasure. It's great having you. <laughs> so let's let's do this as we kick off every episode with a toast. And you so kindly made some coffee, and it's delicious. It really is delicious. So I'm going to raise my glass, my mug of coffee to right. you, and if you raise yours and give us a little toast. Here is to all the intrepid restaurateurs who are willing to work long hours have a lifestyle like nobody else. Cheers. I'm going to take a sip. Here, here. Oh, it's so perfect. Yummy. Let's start off with, you You do don many hats. So let's start off with the columnist hat. Sure. <laughs> sure. You're, you write for the Santa Monica Daily Press. And let's, let's talk a little bit about that because you definitely have some restaurant uh, reviews, critiques, input. And I'm super, I love your articles, first of all. I Thank love you. columns. I, I read them online. And uh, let's just uh, go with that first. And I have some questions well, about well, the Let me places. tell you the story of how that came about. Okay? <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> so it, it really goes all the way back to like high school where I was in journalism. And I loved being a, a writer. And then I was an editor in journalism. And then I went to college and I was the editor of the school yearbook for two years running. And come back to LA, go to law school, open up my office. Hey! I'm William. I'm a salesman for this new paper we've got in town called the Santa Monica Daily Press, and I want you to buy advertising. I'm like, hi, William. I don't want to buy advertising, <laughs> but I'll write for you. <laughs> oh, you got to talk to the editor about that. All right. So I wrote the editor at the time, Carolyn Zachariasen, a quick email. Hey, Carolyn, I want to write for you. I want to do a column because I figured I'll do a column. I'll promote my law practice. I'll talk about local things. I'll do sort of a legal views and news stuff. What's the law on this subject? What's the law on that subject? And she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard this many times before. Send me something. So I sent her two columns and a list of 52 topics, one for each week of the year. I had her convinced I was going to produce. That was 16 years ago, I think. I've been through three editors. I'm on my fourth one now with the Daily Press. That's incredible. Thanks. The, the column has changed over the years a lot. It, originally, it was a very dry sort of legal views and news, and then it got really political for a while. And now we're sort of like in this weird mix of politics and local life and what's Santa Monica like. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's a really light piece, like restaurants I love. Yeah. And sometimes it's, I can't believe what's going on in our government. <laughs> right. Yeah. And But the fun the fun part too is if you're, you were at, I think one was at Lowe's or something, but you always seem to be able to thread in what you're eating or what's being served or what others are eating somehow, even if it feels like that the article is not necessarily about the food. Absolutely. Because, and I do that for a reason, because food is the great equalizer. Everybody gets, everybody will come together over food. And you can put together like, Jews and Arabs, and they'll come together over hummus. It's like, mine's better than yours. Okay, well, mine's better than yours. But, but if we do this one, that's the best. It's like, okay, whatever. So if you put something in there, it makes it interesting, and it's a point of contact for people to really get them engaged. And, and then they're ready to like listen or read whatever else I have to say. That's true. That's, I noticed that. And, I, and of, course, of course, I don't know if it was just me noticing because I'm all about food. But there's, there's um, some <laughs> articles that you 
we're writing about food. So let's get into the food part. Cause I, you know, I, I love your honesty when you're going, when you talk about a place, like for example, was it public speaking? Is it public, not public speaking. Uh, spe- uh, sorry, it begins with an S. Uh, sh- society S- Kitchen? Society Kitchen, yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't sound like public speaking. Not at all. Not even a little but bit. Because we do public speaking, that's where the connection <laughs> came from. I mean, you're like, oh, like the name of a new restaurant, public speaking. Well, no, there's, there is like public school downtown. Oh yeah, public like, school. And then, <laughs> and I'm like, I haven't been there. <laughs> okay. So society. Society it's, Kitchen. Yeah. Society Kitchen. And it's in Santa Monica. Mm-hmm. And I haven't been there. It's right, isn't it? It's like 28th or 20- and Ocean Park yeah. Avenue. So it's in the, there's that little mini mall. Right, like Il Forno. You've got Il Forno, which has been around like for 35 years, yeah. which just amazes me. You know, there's, a, there's that yogurt place, Menchie's, there's a subway, there's a taco It's a little place. plaza almost. And, and the, the funny part about it is, I don't know if it's still there, but there used to be, amongst all these restaurants, a Weight Watchers club. No way. <laughs> like right in the middle of it. So every time they had to go to meetings. Right. Like, oh my gosh, that's yeah. funny. So when you, when you walk into a restaurant now, are you going for particularly just on your own and you're like, oh, I'm going to write about this? Or do you have an intention of writing about a well, place it, it, when it you depends. go? It um, depends. Most of the time, I don't go to a restaurant thinking I'm going to write about it um, because I eat out all the time. I do meetings, breakfast, lunch, and dinner pretty much. One of the things though is that gives me an opportunity to kind of constantly have new content. So I'm always like evaluating things. I'm always remembering things. And it's really convenient sometimes when those deadlines come up and I'm like, oh, I have a deadline. I don't know what I'm going to write about. So it's like, okay, get a cup of coffee. Who haven't we talked about? Who do we want to promote? Yeah. All right. And, that, and that's why like, I will go to restaurants and I'll keep those things in mind. Like when I went to Society Kitchen, that was actually a specifically, I was on a deadline. I went with friends specifically to review them that night. Okay. Because it was a new restaurant. It's only been around, I think, six months maybe. Yeah, it's super new. I haven't, I haven't been there yet. And yeah, it took, it, it's the old native foods location, yeah. which I loved, even though everything was fried. Right. But <laughs> it's so delicious. <laughs> it was. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. So what can you tell us about, I know you have an article written about it, but what, so when you go in, is there certain points whenever you critique a restaurant or when you're going to review a restaurant? I don't know what the proper language is, but do you have certain like step A, step B, step C? I, I usually do go in and it's like, I start with what's the basic ambiance? What's the environment like? And then I'll go down pretty much by category of the menus. Mm-hmm. So it's salads, apps, mains, desserts. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, wrap it up. And then like the basic information, what are their hours? What's their rating? What's the general price points for each category of food? What's the parking situation? Because it's LA and we want to know yeah, about the, parking. Because the parking there kind of, is it, it's... It's great. No, it's great right actually. Is, because they've got a strip in the back. Uh, yeah, the back. And they've also got underground parking. Right, right. And there's actually a lot of street parking around. Yeah, up here because it's a little uh, right. smaller. Right. Now, Society Kitchen, I actually liked for the most part. The biggest problem I had with them was cold french fries. Which just, there's, it just yes, doesn't work. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a tough one. Happen. Yeah. And so I always give, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's because I'm like, I wouldn't say soft, but I give, I give restaurants like a couple tries. Unless it's just really shitty. You know what I mean? But what I mean that is like, maybe if one little thing is off, right. I'll try to give it another. Like, because, you know, sometimes it's just, it, it's just something's off. You know, like, I think you went somewhere to the, was it the, um, the Polish... Solidarity. So, solidarity. And it was like nine o'clock at night or something you said. And it was like, you're like, either this is going to be like on because right. they're paying attention or it's like, I'm the last guy in here and they just want to get me out. Exactly. But, but like, we can get to solidarity, but that's, those are the kind of things where you're, you're conscious of it and you know, you know, and it's like when they do pull through like that, that's like amazing, I think. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing that I liked about Society Kitchen is it's got an indoor outdoor seating. And if you were like me and you got a dog, being able to eat outside with my dog. That's huge. It's a huge thing. And it was kind of funny because that night there was like a, a labradoodle over here and then it's like Great Dane comes up and there's like little terriers walking along just trying to be like, hey, I'm a terrier, I'm in charge. It's like, dude, really? That's so cute though. That's yeah. funny. So that's a, good, that's a really good point when you can bring a dog somewhere. Mm-hmm. That's like the selling point. And parking. Where is he? <laughs> I don't know. He's around here somewhere. Okay. So... What, whether, let's, talk, let's talk about some other articles, some other places. I want to I want to know like date, you know, David Dines, David's picks. Like what's well, what's going all, on in in Santa Monica? Give us some juicy stories and some intel. 
Uh, well, you know, I don't have a lot of juicy stories because I'm not on that side of it. You know, when I was in the Hamburger Hamlet days back in the 80s. Sorry, when I, I was you. really, really young in high school, no less. That's when we had like fun stories, you know, yeah. working Hamburger Hamlet and all of a sudden like you could hear like the whole room just go silent. And I'm like, what's going on? And I look over and it's like, oh, it's Angeline. And she comes in in this like cloud of perfume and paint. And oh it's just like, oh my God, I want her in my section. <laughs> and I got, I got Angeline in my section. Yeah, nice. And it was great. Yeah. You know, and she was fun to work with. Yeah. Um, she was fun to serve. And I've had yeah. famous writers. There was a guy named Stanton Delaplane who used yeah. to be a writer in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Who I grew up in Northern California and he wrote for the Chronicle or the Examiner. I forget which one. But he was a great writer. And I remember serving him and being like, sir, I just really want to say thank you. I, all the years of reading you, I really enjoyed it. And he gave me the biggest tip ever. Oh, nice. I got like a $40 <laughs> tip from this guy for like, you know, a burger and right. a martini. Oh, like, nice. Whoa. Right. Right. That was a strong martini, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. But like in, Los, in, in Santa Monica specifically, I mean, we've got generally a lot of kind of like higher end casual. Yeah. You know, because yeah. we're still a beach community. So people are still like, listen, I'm going to roll off the beach. I'm going to be like Sandy. I'm going to have a t-shirt on, maybe some wet trunks. Right. But I still want to eat quality food. Right. So we've got places like North yeah. and Hi Ho Burgers. Right. We've got Frito Misto. Yeah. You know, we've got I haven't swingers. been to Frito Misto. It's in, it's in that. You know, haven't been I know. to Frito Misto? I know. I know. I sh- I'm outing myself. I haven't. I didn't know about it. I was riding my bike and you I read blew my by column it. this week, though, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. Good. Of course. But I, I haven't been. So you, that's like. Frito Misto is like, from, from my perspective, it, it's some of the best casual Italian food in Santa Monica because yeah. it's very family friendly. It's, right. There's like no linens, no tablecloths, there's no fancy frou frou. It's solid food that you're going to enjoy. Yeah. And what I love most about it is they have like sort of a pick your pasta menu. Yeah. So you'd like, okay, I want the linguine, but I want it with the Alfredo sauce and I want the right. chicken tips, but I want also some artichoke hearts right. and throw in some mushrooms. Because that's unprecedented nowadays, right? <laughs> it is because it's too much customization. Yeah. You know, and in, as we've gone more corporate, everybody yeah. wants like, let's just make a cookie cutter. Right. Damn. So what, I'm sorry, I interrupted you guys because the Frito Miso because it was just, you, you know, written about it and then I hadn't been there and I didn't want to tell you, but yeah. I told you and then I drove by my bike by and it was in Colorado. I think, isn't the entrance strange? It's in it like right by the train tracks or was I? It's on the corner of 6th and Colorado, right, right across in the big blue bus parking lot. Right. Where yeah. all the buses go at the end of the night. Right. So, so you've it's got a strange... train that goes right by and right along like 6th, you've got all these new condos. There's a dance studio. It's It's sort of like the far end of like a restaurant row where yeah. Broadway is sort of restaurant row these days. Right. With Inoteca and Opica mm-hmm. and is that other one? Tarn, not Tarn Roses. Tarn, uh, Tarn, is uh, it Tarn Roses? Tarn Roses is over there. Yeah, it's over in that area. Yeah. So it's sort of like on the south end of all that, but it's really got a following. Yeah. I mean, you could spend a lot of time there on a Saturday night, like 20, 30 minutes waiting yeah. for people because it's that popular. Yeah. Which is a good sign. That is a good sign. And hopefully they'll be able to stay because what 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 have you seen in that area? Because you know I haven't been here for very long, yeah. and I came as this um, the mess kind of cleared up, and now there there you know, there's a bike path on the street, and the, you know there, there's the the metro. But getting to that point before that, all the restaurants. I mean, is it the landscape? It was, it was hard for a lot of the restaurants in that area when construction was going on because traffic was a nightmare. There wasn't a lot of parking. Yeah. There was, you know, people just wanting to avoid the area in general. Right. So there were a couple of restaurants along that block that did go out of business. Yeah. Which is sad. Because, and I'd been on that side. I've been of working with restaurateurs shutting down businesses. And it's oh, really sh- sad to see that. Yeah, I know. So going back to your critiquing. So da- the David David Picks. So I, I want to... David Dines. I'm going to say Dave, David Picks. <laughs> David Dines. <Sorry. laughs> no, so you would be... Pizarra picks yes, that's or a, David P- Dines. Ah, that's right. Pizarra picks David Dines. So David, Dave Dines, actually, right? No. I think it said it. Dave. David Dines. Oh, David? Yeah. I was reading on, I thought it said Dave on an article, no? I must. If it did, somebody needs to be shot. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> My a, mother would come back from the grave and you'd be like, who's doing his name wrong? <laughs> you're like, she did a lot of research in the beginning. Now she's saying it David It was always picks. David, not Dave. Okay. Except for when she wanted me to be Davey. Uh, but that was a whole that's other That's a whole other, yeah. So, 
David Dines. I want to I want to know some more intel and information about cool spots. Then, so we you, that maybe you haven't written about, or things that you little um, best kept secrets that won't be secrets anymore, or you know things like that that come off the top of your mind. Uh, back on Broadway, over like twentieth and Broadway mm-hmm. is is a great place because they've got an outdoor patio in the back where you and they, they open a little bit later. I think it's like seven o'clock in the morning for breakfast, which I'm always like. If you're breakfast, you should be open at five. Yeah, you should be open at five or five thirty. I don't run the business. (laughs) (laughs) They do it their way. Um, But they've got a a back patio that's really nice, so you can like go get your coffee, bring your your computer, do your work, and it's quiet. Mm. Which for me as a writer is a really important thing to have quiet. I'm I'm a real big fan of places where I can just enjoy a decent meal and not get bombarded with like loud music to get out now. It's like, Mm -hmm. oh, I hate that. They also have a back room if you're going to do private parties. So like say you wanted to cater a small birthday party for like 15, 20 people Mm -hmm. and you wanted to not, I don't want to cook for that many people. My apartment's too small. Go there. They've got a nice back room. You can close it off. Food's good. They've got a main dining area that's wonderful. Lots of free flow, and it's not too loud also. The other place that I really, really like... Wait, wait, did we say the name? Back on Broadway. Oh, Back, yeah, on, Broadway. back on Broadway. Oh my God, that's so funny. I thought you meant way back on Broadway. No, no, no. That's, that's the name of it, is Back <laughs> on Broadway. I thought you were saying back like because we were talking about Broadway. Yeah. So you're like, Back on Broadway. No. <laughs> no, that's the name of the restaurant. <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Back on Broadway. I don't know that restaurant. But you got to check it out. I'm going to definitely check you it definitely out. Definitely got to check that one out. The other one that I really like is on, I want to say it's Yale and Santa Monica Boulevard. It's Coogie's Coffee. Mm. It's an old style. Like it, it probably was like a Denny's or an IHOP or some point because it's got that, the huge ceilings. Yeah. And it's just got this extensive menu, nice place, big room. Again, outdoor seating. So you've got the nice quiet area and the, and the patio. So you can be in the sun, in the shade. Yeah. Really love that place. And they have a fairly decent banana bread. Okay. The so that's, banana, important. that's important. Yeah. I know I know what your uh, style of food is because you, well, not food, desserts. You're a pie guy. I'm a pie, uh, yeah. A yeah. little bit, pie guy? Uh, pie and cake is kind of, it's a hard call. But, yeah. but you did an but editorial. I do love pie. I do love yeah. really good pie. Met, remember one time we did the editorial, we met at Toastmasters. And it was, it was the best editorial. That was so good. From when if We're in Toastmasters together. Well, I haven't been in a little while, obviously, for my speech. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, that's where we met, David. I met David. And your speeches are outstanding and how you. you speak. But you, this one editorial you did about why pie... Do you remember that one? Well, was- why, why pie is better than cake? <laughs> yes. Well, I, okay, there's several reasons why pie is better okay, than cake. Okay, please get I into mean, that because it's like so The short version is, you, know, you can start with the crust. So you've got graham cracker and butter, always a good choice. But if you go with a traditional crust and you get it right, where you've used some vodka in the actual crust, you get this super flaky crust. It's from Cook's Illustrated. Mm-hmm. And what you do is you take like the normal amount of water and you reduce it by half and you bring that back up to what it's supposed to be with like a very good quality vodka. Wow. And you want it good quality, which is kind of a misnomer because most vodka is the same. <laughs> but, but you don't want it to have a really strong chemically taste. Right. Right? A strong flavor you don't want in the pie crust. And what ends up happening is while you're kneading the bread, I mean, or kneading the crust, the fluid of the alcohol helps you with the gluten creation. But then when you bake it, that evaporates. So you end up with this super flaky, really amazing crust. Wow. That's one of the important parts is having a really good crust, obviously, with pie. Yeah. But pie is more versatile than cake because with pie, you can have everything from pumpkin, which is kind of a savory, to a really sweet pumpkin. You can have a rhubarb, which is really sharp and tangy. Mm-hmm. You have rhubarb strawberry, which was amazing. The best rhubarb strawberry I ever had was in this roadside diner in Colorado. I was doing a road trip. Mm-hmm. Just pull into this, like, you know, mom's type place. Yeah. And then they've got this big old pie. And I'm like, I want one of those. And I got a slice of it with like vanilla ice cream. And it was the best combination of sweet strawberries and tangy rhubarb and the creaminess of the ice cream. Oh, no. Damn, it's so good. Cake is just cake. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, you got chocolate, you got white, you got yellow. It's great. It's good. I like it. But 
Pie is versatile, and that's why pie is better than cake. <laughs> See, now that I'm, I want pie. When after I heard your your editorial on that, I forgot about the vodka part though, because I, I don't bake. I'm not a good baker. I cook, but I don't bake because it's too many directions to follow. Yeah, it's chem. It, it, chem it's chemistry as yeah. opposed to carpentry. Yeah. Cooking is carpentry. Yeah. Basically, it's like put together the right pieces. Yeah. And if you're a little off, you're a little off. <laughs> yeah, you know off. what? You, you fudge it. You <laughs> sand it down. You put, you're fine. <laughs> you can't do that with pastry. No, it's got to be right. Otherwise, you just get rock. I remember I've tried to... I really like um, muffin tops. I don't like the oh. bottoms. So I thought... And now I know why there's bottoms to the tops because you can't have a muffin top without the bottom. So I tried to make a muffin top without the bottom and it was just a really hard, terrible, almost cookie-like sponge. So he had... Did, did you have the right pan? No, I just put it on a cookie sheet. Okay, okay. <laughs> that, you, know, you can't, you know, you can't do that. This is a few years You've ago. got to have like a little bit of the bottom. <laughs> just why you get the, the muffin top pants. with their big, bo- big round pieces. Yeah, right. and little tiny... And little tiny but, bottoms. And but you need the muffin is, top. It was probably like 10, 15 years ago or something. Okay. I don't know if, know if muffin tops were in yet. Probably. Probably not. Yeah. I was a little cutting edge. But anyways, that's what I learned from that experience. So when you're going to, if you eat pie, where, where's your pie places around here in Santa Monica? Like, do you have any? Izzy's is a really good pie place. They usually have a pretty decent selection. Swingers has, eh, so-so. Yeah. Pie and Burger in like Glendale is where you really got to go. Okay. Where? Um, pie and Burger? The Apple Pan in West LA, which is a classic place. Because there's like, the regular burger, there's the hickory burger, there's a tuna fish sandwich, ham and cheese, and I think an egg salad. Nice. And that's it. There's your menu. Nice. That's it. That's good though. And they have like three types of pie or four types of pie and then like one that rotates. Mm. And, and their banana cream is amazing. It's just an off the charts pie. Mm. Their apple pie is obviously what they're known for because it hits the apple pan. Right. So that place is always great if you can get in. Long lines. Really? Frequently. Very long lines there. Nice. Yeah. Do you ever get to cut because you're like, I'm, I'm David? Yeah, nobody knows me. <laughs> yeah, nobody knows me. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> but then you'd have to, you would have to be undercover because then once you come in, you'd be like, you know, the Phantom Gourmet-ish. Like, like, yeah, hidden, it's just not my style. Yeah, it's I'm, not. I'm just yeah. not that guy. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I like this. I don't like that. You know, waiters need some training. Like, come on, let's, let's go. Yeah, that's fun. So what, let's see, there was another, I think you were at, the tavern, the um, Jimmy's famous tavern for, yeah. for, uh, for they were, I forget why you were by there. I read the article. Or it was like blocked. six, seven months ago. Uh, they, they just invited opened. us in. They just opened. Yes. They invited me in to, uh, to basically do a review. Yeah. And we tried a whole bunch of appetizers and entrees. And I was really impressed with the food. I was impressed with the service. I was impressed with the overall ambience. Is that it was, sexy in there? It's very, for, it's very sexy. It's I was got surprised a very that, strong nightclub feel. And it's like open. I went on the head just to open and meaning like it's open, like the air blows in and it's, you know, it's, there's. It's right on Ocean Avenue and they've got an outside seating area that has divided from the main dining area by giant windows that they can slide open and close. Mm. So you do get that wonderful breeze when you're on the inside, even though you're inside where it's warm and a little quieter, right. you still have that outside feel. And it's dark. It has it like the bar has it's that like definitely nice, got that like, dark, sexy, yeah, this, smoky thing going on. Yeah, it's, I was surprised because I've been to the taverns, Jimmy's, like on the East Coast, and they're a little bit more TGI Fridays ish. You know, like a little bit more tavern uh, corporate kind of place. So, so did you go back since then to try the burger again? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, see, here's the dangerous part. Jimmy's is right across from the Lowe's Hotel. Oh, yes. And the Lowe's is where I work out. So I've got my gym and then you work out and it's like, oh, I'm with my buddy. And it's like, are you hungry? I'm hungry. Let's go get a burger. Nice. (laughs) Because they have these amazingly huge burgers. And I mean, honestly, it really ought to be like advertised as buy this burger for the two of you and split it. Yeah. Because it's so big. Uh It is. It's it's like a, a head. It, it, I think it's, it's, it's almost like cooked three quarters of a pound. All right, that's amazing. Which and is it's, huge. And that's I was reading about it. It's like it's not, um, it's not ground. It's chopped, right? It's I mean they have a proprietary blend, right? I mean, yeah. yeah uh, that, <laughs> when, when, when in, in, in law school, when I opened, uh, I was working in law school on, at uh, Rusty's on the tavern okay. on the pier. Yeah. And I remember the guy there, the the head chef at the time, was really touting our we have our hard rock grind of ground beef. I'm like. Whatever, dude. <laughs> right. Call yeah. it whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. So you use a little bit bigger grinder. Right. And then 
Yeah. Yeah. Hand cut fries. It doesn't mean you're taking like a, a knife a, and then <laughs> you're running it through a machine <laughs> with your hand. Right. <laughs> it's, it's just like in and out, kids. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So we are, we're, let's talk about some other um, projects that you're involved with. Food or not food. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about podcasts. I want to talk about podcasts. I love podcasts. Yeah. I love, I love that you love podcasting. It's really been, for me, it, with my law practice, it's been a wonderful tool to educate people and to get the message out about what they need to know going into court and how to prepare for a divorce, child custody case, yeah. or domestic violence so, case. It's solid information. Your content on that. Thank you. Thank you. Super and that's solid. the goal is to educate people. And you know, I'm going to educate 10 of them. Two of them are going to become my clients. Fine. That's, that's great. Because those two, by the time they're picking up the phone to call me, I'm not teaching them. I'm not selling them. Right. They're like, when am I coming in and writing you a check? Right. That's the power of podcasting because they've already been educated. They're already knowing, liking, and trusting me. Right. And that's the important part. Yeah. So that was from your previous podcast, but now you're involved in another project. Are you moving forward? What's, what else okay, are you like, doing? <laughs> you have so much great. We, we, we were we donning that. Well, you have to keep your column though. Right. I'm definitely keeping the column. Keep the I'm, column. I'm keeping the columns. <laughs> um, because the columns are sort of like a guilty pleasure. It's it it's it's a deadline and a responsibility, yeah. but it's also it's such a great access mm -hmm. to like who I am and what I'm thinking, and it lets me vent things. Yeah. And I just I love the creativity of it. Yeah. But back to what I'm working on, yeah. coming out with a new website called Podcasting for Professionals. Okay. And the new podcast is going to be interviewing doctors, lawyers, chiropractors, you know, the traditional psychologists, the traditional right meaning of professionals. Right. And then we're expanding that into people who are actually paid to do things today. So from a more wide view of what professional really means. Mm -hmm. So we've got professional chefs, we've got professional marketers, professional PR people, the kind of thing that allows us to expand out our topics of how podcasting can help them educate their client base right. so that they end up getting people just calling them to, right. let me write you a check. Right. Because now that you mean that so you're going to have guests on. May I ask you some questions about it? Please. So if you have guests on, they're on one time, you mean so that the conversation or are you helping them continue podcasting? Or do you know what I mean? Like, what's... I do. I do. Well, it's going to be an educational... The format's basically going to be educational of this is how you can use it and this is why you want to use it. Okay. And then I'm going to be interviewing people who are, are doing it already. Okay. We've got several lawyers lined up, a couple yeah. psychiatrists, an uh, osteopath out of Pennsylvania, nice. a dentist out of Florida. I mean, there's yeah. professionals who are already doing it to say, what's your experience been? What have you found that worked? What didn't work? Why do you think that happened? How could you do that better? Yeah, that's super what helpful. What do you want to share with people? Yeah. So it's going to be that sort of education and experience together in one podcast. And are you going to launch, do you know when a date is or... I, I'm not having a hard date. I'm looking okay. probably the end of November. Nice. So my, soon. my first interviews are lined up for the end of this week, actually. Nice. So, yeah. Excellent. Are you doing Skype or in person? or Well, some have to be in Skype. Some will be in person and or, most will probably be over Skype or Zoom because honestly, people are really busy. And it's like... It's easier for them to get. We love being, being able to just you know, go in and do a Zoom thing. Yeah. I like Zoom. That's great. Yeah. Zoom's great. Zoom.us. Yeah. And it's... Two people, it's unlimited recording. Yep. It's great. And you can, I like when you have groups on there. It's like the Brady Bunch. Have, yep. You can do videos. <laughs> like there's, there's like six shots and you're all, you can look up and down. <laughs> it's, exactly. it's so <laughs> funny. Oh God. So that's exciting. And then I feel like your the other part of your hat that you don is uh, speaking. I am, I, a, I am a professional accolades. public speaker. I am going to be speaking uh, next month in... Carson, Dominguez Hills, Ventura. December, I'm going to be in Mexico. February, I'm going to be in Auckland, New Zealand at the nice. Global Speaker Summit. Nice. I'm going to be doing a presentation on podcasting for professionals. Nice. So that's sort of the, the next level for me. So how do you, when you go to speaking, how do you prepare? Like, for example, public speaking is really important, obviously, or just any type of being able to give a speech or feel comfortable in front of people. If you're, even if you're like a server at a restaurant, you know, everybody's kind of looking. Or even if you're um, a manager or something, you have to kind of give your pre-shift talks or, you know, you have a product and you have to go pitch it to somebody like in the food and beverage industry. Right. So obviously there's some, there's a skill set to that. 
So how would you, what would you recommend? Do you have tips, tools, tactics of how somebody can kind of get comfortable or dialed in or where to start? The way that, the, the, if you really want to start, you really want to get good, you need to join a Toastmasters club and, and start working through the program. Because at the end of the day, what matters is practice. Like anything, you've got to get up and do it. And for most people, the reason why it's scary is it's always a high stakes thing. You know, here I am, manager, first day in the job, 20 people in my new crew. I've never done this before. I've got to get up there and talk. Oh my God, I'm going to make a fool out of myself. You might because you haven't done it. But if you go to a Toastmasters club and you're getting up in front of a room and doing your icebreaker speech and all of these people have done the icebreaker speech and they're all being like, yeah, go, come on, we're, we're rooting for you. Right. You're going to get up there and you can get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And if you fall on your face, fine. No one's going to be like, oh, look, you've made a fool out of yourself and now I'm never going to respect you as a manager anymore. Right? right? Because point. I've got an opportunity to grow. We know you're there to grow. We don't expect you to be good. But as your first day on the job as a manager, your staff expects you to be good. Toastmasters allows you to grow in a very safe environment. Is that how you started or is that when, how long have you been in Toastmasters? I mean, you, cause I just, just to give a side note, I met David in Toastmasters, but your speeches are awesome. And we do table topics. Table topics is, if you want to explain table topics. Table topics is the impromptu, <laughs> give a speech on why pie is better than cake. That's what table topics is. Off the, on a fly though. Yeah. And you don't know what the question is until you're up there generally. I came to, to Toastmasters about seven years ago. Uh, I had been a lawyer at that point about 12, 13 years. So I was used to getting up and speaking. The problem was I wasn't speaking in like a professional speaker's way. Mm -hmm. And you don't get feedback from the judges of this is what will make you better. Right. You get you won or you lost. Right. That's it. Right. So I wanted feedback. And when I got the Toastmasters, I could get up there and I could talk, but I didn't have any of the polish. Yeah. And what Toastmasters gave me was an opportunity and feedback to really learn stagecraft, how to use the stage to my advantage, how to tell a story in such a way that there's suspense built yeah. and how to create an interest and how to tell a punchline and how to get the whole package deal right. versus, good morning, your honor, David Pizarro for the petitioner. It's like, ugh, not the right. same thing. Right. So did you feel as though when you first started Toastmasters, if you can remember that, when you first gave maybe your table topics or a speech, was it, I can't imagine it was disastrous because you were, a, <laughs> oh, you're a lawyer, but was it compared to when you look back? Like, were you like, wow, how much, obviously seven years, do you cringe at all at that first or second one? Or was it all, are you like, okay, it's. I, no, because I, I, again, it was, it, it's a safe environment. And you're right. expected to right. not be good at first. <laughs> so right. nobody's expecting you to get up there and do an Oscar winning rendition of anything. So it's, it's a safe place for me to get up there and, and share my stories. It wasn't a bad experience. It was a great experience in terms of getting the feedback of your content is great. Now let's put some polish on it. Let's give you the stagecraft that'll really make you a good speaker because that's what people are coming to Toastmasters for. That said, <laughs> I got to tell you this story. <laughs> okay, tell me. <laughs> we had a, uh, we had a, a member who, who was autistic. And he was very open and he loved to talk about being autistic and what the experience was like and how he viewed the world. And it was really illuminating. And he added a lot to our club. It, he learned a lot of social cues as a consequence of being in Toastmasters. And he talked about the way that it helped socialize him. And in Toastmasters, one of the things we do is we tell, once somebody gives a speech, you get an evaluation. And the format of an evaluation is something good, where you can improve, and something good again. I look forward to your next speech. So one time I give the speech and I just blew it. I was trying to videotape it. I'm wearing a suit. I'm trying to like manage the video camera and do my thing. I got microphones on. I was horrible. Just off. And this kid gets up and he's my evaluator for the night. And he comes up and he knows he's got to start with something good. David. I really liked your suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. And it was like the whole room just started laughing. It's, we all knew. It was like, he blew it. It's like, what the heck? And it was like the 
best evaluation of all time. That is, is that, awesome. Like that statement. <laughs> that is really, that's smart. I don't know if I... Oh, yeah, it's too, brilliant. It's brilliant, right? I mean, yeah. so I have to go back to Toastmasters. I've only had a couple of speeches and um, I still, when I think about it, it does make me nervous to think about going up there and giving a speech. And does that ever go away? <laughs> it, it, I mean, there's it definitely lessons. It lessons. Definitely lessons. You get comfortable with it. Yeah. You know, but there are still moments and that's okay because that means you're, it's important to you right. and it should be important to you. You know, giving yourself to an audience and the audience allowing you to expose yourself in that way is really important and it's really high stakes. And that's why I say go practice so that when it is truly high stakes, when you're doing it in the work environment or you're trying to raise money, you're at least comfortable enough to know that you're not going to fall on your face. You'll still feel the anxiety, right. but it'll be manageable. Right. That makes sense. I, didn't, I mean, I know that seems like so obvious that if you go and speak in front of a group as a manager or as a product pitch and you haven't done it before, the stakes are high. You're either going to do it right. or you're going to blow or, or, or do a terrible job. But if you're in front of what, Toastmasters, it's just... It's, it's, it's practice. It's That's practice. the point. Yeah. So Toastmasters are all, is all over the world, right? International? They are. Toastmasters International, I think, is in... 150 different countries. I mean, they're really focused on the international part of that. Right. Because everybody that listens to the podcast, I mean, I know every, people are in Santa Monica, so we are on the west side is the, is the Toastmasters. The best side, yeah. The best side. And there's that other one, that sand and sea thing that some people go to. Yeah, sand um, and sea. You know, but the nice thing about Toastmasters is how inexpensive it is. Mm -hmm. You know, for the, for the quality of training you get and the people you meet, ours is what, $90 every six months? Yep. It's $15 a month. It's $4 yeah. a session. Right. That's, you, you can't go to Starbucks for $4. <laughs> you can't. You can't even. Right? I mean, by the time you're done with a double milk grande latte and a <laughs> twist with a little bit of muffin, you're at 12 bucks. And then you had a park, so. Yeah, yeah. That's a whole lot. <laughs> okay. So I want to know, what have you done a, a speech other than the pie one on anything with food that comes to mind? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like when I was working through my competent communicator, I did a whole speech, and this is six years ago, on why chocolate was so important and so nutritious and such an important part of our diet and should be a food group. And I bet you convinced everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah they were all like... <laughs> what are the key points, you remember? I'm curious as to why it's... Like, where you... Did, I'm sure you went and got facts because you are, you know, a lawyer, so you probably found went fact-finding and... Really yeah, I had a whole, like, list of the facts and the fat content and the different nutritional values of, of why you want a good chocolate versus just, you know, that not so good high sugar, high right. fructose content as opposed to like a really good quality dark chocolate that's right. really coming from a good producer. So do you have one now that you like? You like chocolate still? Okay. <laughs> this is a three pound box of chocolate. <laughs> okay. It's a block. Oh my literally. gosh. I thought that was like, oh my God. No, it's literally a block. Yeah. Wow. That is because something. Because I'm giving out chocolate for and there's a part hammer. of my promotion. Yeah, it comes with a hammer to break it. <laughs> and then this is another box of chocolate. Oh my gosh. So is and there this certain... is what's left of the promo pack <laughs> that totallychocolate.com sent me. Oh, nice. When I asked them, what are your samples like? And they said, well, we'll send you some. And I thought, okay, I'm going to get like two Hershey bars and a lollipop. And I got this giant box with like 10 pounds of chocolates. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to go in a coma. <laughs> so you, you do enjoy the chocolate. I like, I like chocolate. I like the dark chocolate. Yeah, I'm a, I'm de well, depends. I, I, dark or milk, either one's great. White is just sort of like, ugh, what is that? Oh, you don't like the white chocolate? It, it always feels really too oily on my mouth. Yeah. It's just got yeah. a really gross mouth feel. Right. And that's what I don't like about it, I think. That's interesting. So like if you mix it with something and you get sort of the hint of the flavor, but without that heavy fat content, yeah. it makes a big difference to me. Right. You are, you're like a food connoisseur. I mean, you're, like when you describe it, no, when you describe things, I'm like totally engaged in like when you break down a uh, food item or like how you explain it down to its core, I'm like, okay, okay, like now I want chocolate. And then before I was like, okay, I really want a burger. And then before, you know, how you explain it. So what else? What about pizza? Do you like pizza? I love pizza. Um, What's your pizza place around here? Those I haven't... pizza places are mediocre to miserable. I haven't found my a, experience. a really, um, Milo and Olive, you know? I have not been to Milo and Olive. Yeah, that's good. They have the real ovens. Yeah. See, then there's all these different trends. 
you know, there's like the 800 degrees, which was like, okay, it's a nice little marketing hook, but pizza came out and it was really soggy and kind of gross. Right. I'm like, uh, not so into that. Right. You know, I like pizza that's either, I either I want like the really just two in the morning after the bar, right. just greasy <laughs> pepperoni. And I want like, you know, a big, thick crust or like a deep dish style that's right. got yeasty, yeah. like soak up all the alcohol. Right. Or I want something that's got a really nice crust that's got a nice tooth to it, but also has a good selection of really high quality vegetables and meats. Mm. I went to Obika last month or the month before. And they have a, basically it's a flatbread. They, mm-hmm. It's kind of, they call it like a pizza, but really it's a, it's, it's non with like six pieces of buffalo mozzarella and some basil. And I'm like, eh. And Obika's Italian, isn't it? The, yeah. the restaurant is, yes. Yeah. Obika, it's on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Yes. Nice. What other place? Gotta give me one more. What? Oh, <laughs> I'm picking your brain because I have you. Uh, I have okay. you here. <laughs> so classic pizza on Pico and like 26th. Okay. It's in that little mall where there's like a yum yum donuts. Yeah. There's a pizza place. There's the Indian tandoori that I love. Uh-huh. Nine dollar lunch buffet and it's killer and they make an amazing garlic naan. There's a Baskin Robbins, the Wick place, and the laundry place. But in this little like corner of the lot Mm -hmm. is classic pizza. And they do gourmet pizza flavorings. Probably the best in town for the dollar. Truly. Like pies or slices? Pies. Pies. It's pies. Yeah. It's in that little... little Yeah, they do a a basil pesto chicken that is phenomenal. When you went to uh, Mm Hi-Ho, it used to be in Ojai. Yes. uh, It it moved from Ojai down here. Don't you think that's a strange move? Like, that's a big move, right? It's a very bold move. Yeah. But because it's part of a bigger corporate model, uh, because they're part of, they're tied in with Sugarfish and they're tied oh, in with Oh, I didn't Uobo. know that. Yeah. Oh, is that why they have the Wagyu? Yeah, that's they why. Have the, oh, that's why. and they're like seven bucks for the burgers. Six. And then if you get something like that, so yeah. but they're worth it. I got to tell it. you, they're no, worth it. No, it's only seven. Like, it's not, it's, I don't, and it's, I love how it's just like burger, cheese, ketchup. Yeah. Like, that's good. Yeah. That's what you want. And really good pie. Oh, yes. They have really good pie. Right. They did a great key lime and they did an amazing banana. Which one do you like better, banana or, or key lime? Or does it depend on the day? It depends on the day, but generally key lime takes the day. Yeah? Usually. Nice. If it's good. I mean, it's, it's a good key lime pie is that perfect blend of tart and sweet. And yeah. then you get the buttery crust. Yeah. And it's just like, oh. That's the best. Now, don't get me anywhere near that white stuff that people pile on top of it that's just oh, gross because yeah. it's usually the horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. It's usually disgusting. Yeah. It's usually been on there long enough to develop like that water layer between <laughs> the actual pie yeah. and the meringue. So they're now separated, which right. is just weird and gross. Right. Ugh. Right. <laughs> I you're want like expert. solid whipped cream yeah, or, the, or nothing. Or nothing. So you're, you're a big fan of Zig Ziglar. Loves Zig Ziglar. Yeah, you're a huge fan. And I think you, you like the, a lot of the quotes that have, uh, was it, um, as, I don't know the exact quote, but it's more people that you help, the more people that you provide service for. The, you can have everything you want in this life if you help enough other people get what they want. And if you think about it, he's really right. Like my books, my man's guide to divorce strategy and child custody and all that stuff are on my website. And I didn't really understand what he said and what he meant until I looked at that and I was like, I would love to make X amount of dollars to pay for my website. Oh, my books cost $11.95. After cost, after processing fees, I make $11.30. I spent $2,600. This is a long time ago. Right. I sold enough books that would pay for that. Mm-hmm. They're getting the information they need out of my books, and I'm getting what I need. Oh, and it was like the light bulb went on. Like, oh, that's what you're talking about. Like, so say it again, like the, the meaning that... The, you can have everything you want in this life okay. if you help enough other people get what they want. Okay. So I'm helping these guys get yeah. what they want with their custody and their divorce. Right. That way I get what I want. Right. So do you apply those principles in other parts of your life or is that like your mantra, or your, your mindset? Absolutely. It's one of the reasons why I do the podcast. It's why I do the second podcast, Podcasting for Professionals. It's why I'm doing the backstory on Good Men Project where we're interviewing Yeah, the Good Men Project is the other one I want to talk yeah, about. Where yeah, we're interviewing the, the editors and writers of the Good Men Project because we're helping them. I'm helping them promote what they're doing. So that allows me to get the promotion I need. So by helping them get what they want, mm-hmm. I'm going to get what I want. And if you come at things from a service-based model, 
it actually makes it a more enjoyable process. And you you know you're doing good. And that will be reflected back on you. So without being like, oh, you know, you can put it in any language, like on the retail level, but on the wholesale level, it's all the same. Meaning like what you, it's karma or what you put out, you get back or energy or, you know, some, I don't want to say religious, but spiritual uh, principles along those lines. But, or you can just be like Zig Ziglar, like, dude, if you, you know, help enough people get what they want. The, the genius of Zig was that he took those high-minded spiritual principles that are buried, you know, behind (laughs) pomp, circumstance, morality, judgment, you know, long dresses for people in churches. And he just boiled it down to its simplest, most basic middle America essence of, what are you talking about, dude? Like, help enough other people and you'll get what you want. Right. That's That's it. it. You need to make a million dollars, help a million people and get them to give you a dollar. Okay. Okay. Bingo. Right. It's interesting how how it's just the language, yeah. how it's scripted just a little bit different, but the but on the wholesale level, it's all the same. It all of. boils down to the same. <laughs> that's awesome. So let's talk about the, uh, the Good Man Project. Okay. Tell, me, tell us about that because that's kind of pretty cool. The Good Man Project is a participatory media company, which means that they're, they, will, they want their readers, of which they have two to three million a month, to, two, two to yeah, you know, a couple, a couple, couple million, million users, or whatever, yeah, no a deal. month, whatever. Right. <laughs> you want their their readers to contribute. So it's if you want to write for the Good Men Project, it's very easy. You go to submittable.com and you set up an account and you submit your article, and it'll get routed to an editor, and they'll be like, "This is good. We'd love to see you do this." And you get some feedback, and then they'll put it up. And the Good Men Project is designed to be the conversation about men in the 21st century that no one else is having. So if you've got those topics that you want to talk about or write about, but you don't know where to write about, like you can't write about everything on men's health or GQ or Mm -hmm. Forbes, you know, this is the place for it. That's cool. That's cool. You sent me once, I think a while ago, it was like help, Harrow, help. I know it's something different, but the help, those are kind of pretty cool submissions for people who want to like submit something to, you can talk a little bit about that. Harrow is help a reporter out. And it started off years ago with um, Peter Shankman. And it was, it was just one reporter needing an expert. And he would, it was like basically just an email list that would blast out like four times a day. Like, I'm working on these articles. Who's got an expert? You know, here's my query. Write me back. And it blew up. It is huge yeah. because it's everybody who's looking for content and who are looking for experts and people who want to be experts. Right. So I think the one I sent you was probably on cooking it's or cookbooks yeah, or something. Right. But it's really cool. It opened up a world. I was right. like, holy moly. Because you've got these reporters yeah. who are working for big, big publications. Yeah. I mean, we're talking New York it's, Times, yeah. Wall Street Journal, Time Magazine, Newsweek. It's it, this is not just some little blog in the middle of Idaho who's looking like, you know, I need somebody to talk to me. No, this is real stuff. Mm-hmm. And you can get real leads out of it if you've got your pitch done. Yeah, it's a pitch. I remember, was there something recently where over the few months ago, there was like, oh, so-and-so quoted you. I think it was the um, Kardashian. Oh, yeah, me <laughs> sorry, and the Kardashians. Sorry, I just, just had to bring it up. Me, God was, bless me and the Kardashians. Like, I just, oh. It's just like you. They, you know, they're such a... There's such a juggernaut of media and there's always something going on. And, and probably two or three times a month, I've got a reporter that calls me and is like, talk to me about what's going on between Black China and Tiger. Talk to me about Rob and China. I'm like, oh God, I don't, whatever. That's really funny. It is funny, but, but the reality is, you know, they have created a, a media empire. Huge. Yeah, and they need to be recognized and credit needs to be given. For Chris building it. Chris is amazing. And for the girls participating yeah. in it and really mastering media in the way that they have. I, I like the Kardashians, so I do. I think that, they're, I mean, I can't believe that Chris has had all those kids, A, physically. Yeah. It blows my mind. And that they're all beautiful. Blows my mind, right? And that they're well, all, no, but that they're all, there's not even like, you know, one or two. <laughs> And then the kid, the younger, the daughters who were the Jenner ones, yeah, they were. They're now building an empire. I mean, it's just like it, oh, I, the, there was a point last year where I think it was Kylie was actually bigger than Kim on Twitter. It's like it's like what? How'd that happen? I know. So that's pretty amazing. So you do help a lot of people with content and not so much branding, but more of content um, marketing, getting getting things out there. I know you were working with Chris was Chris Chris, with- Chris Luera is a uh, an athlete that we. 
doing his biography and we're building him out into being an athlete sponsor public speaker. And it's going pretty well. It's going really well. Like actually, really well. We just, it, it, your timing is great on this. We're actually in the very last stages of inking a, a sponsorship deal for him with a beef jerky manufacturer. Wow. And Chris Luera- is, I get chills because I love that guy. He, he's known he's, as Tatted Strength on, yeah. on Instagram. He's this short little guy with a beard and bald head and he's covered in tattoos. And he's just the nicest guy you ever want to meet with some interesting dietary stuff. He's just a real carnivore. And he does the calisthenics and he, I just saw that video. I don't know who shot it of with the, when he was down doing, uh, down here at the beach here. Um, it was on his Instagram, I think, or maybe you posted it. I don't know. It was Are on you Facebook. thinking of the sullen video that was, was just the sullen yeah. clothing? Was it the clothing? And then it was Sullen like, clothing just did a video of, of like a short little bio of him yeah. where they've got him, they're interviewing him about what his background is and what his story was. And, and it's all leading up to the book that we've got coming out first quarter of next year. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Yeah. You've been working yeah. with, you You do a lot. You're like, every, that's what I'm saying, all the hats. That's what I'm saying. I didn't know, I was trying to draft a narrative, like just get an idea of where this podcast was going to go. But I'm like, he, you're, you are, have so much going on and successes that I didn't, I'm like, we're, I didn't know which direction to steer it in because it is very interesting. So I'm, I wanted to hit all the hats and I probably only scratched the surface of them, but we'd have to do like a part two, I think when we, when <laughs> yeah. we get to the next. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But you know, it's interesting because so much of the, yes, they look like they're, they're separate, but they really do all feedback together again. We're right back to like the interwebs and the, the social media. It's like, if you're doing one thing, you want to cross over into this and this and this. You go on Instagram, you make, do a posting. Well, you want that post to cross over to automatically post on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and Pinterest, right? Because <laughs> if you're going to do it, you might as well do it. Right. It's like, why not? You just flip the switch and there it is. <laughs> right. But you can do that same thing. And now that content can go over to your WordPress blog. Mm -hmm. So now it's a blog post. Right. Your podcast, we take the content, we have it transcribed. Now we've got a blog post. Right. Take 20 blog posts. What do we got? Oh, look, it's a book. <laughs> hey, right. let's do a book trailer. Now we're back to video. Okay, we're doing video. Where's that? Now it's Instagram and YouTube. Right. So That's... yes, it's a lot of hats, but really it's just maximizing the one skill of digital marketing and digital media because that's what it all boils down to. Right. Everything loops back on itself. Wow. So good. You're really good. I've got, you just got me thinking. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just glazed over for a minute, didn't I? <laughs> but see, that's where like the podcasting for professionals comes in. Mm -hmm. Because the hook is, okay, we're going to talk to you about podcasting, but let's look at the whole picture also because you're doing this one piece, but it needs to go here, it needs to right. go here, it needs to go here. Yeah. And that's how you maximize your effectiveness. Right. You know, you don't need to be doing 25 things, really, if you just do one and then repackage it and repurpose yeah, it. Repurpose it. That's nice. Yeah. Especially nowadays, it's easier in a sense for ways to get onto YouTube from without doing anything. All of a sudden, your podcast is on YouTube and you just didn't have Tim to. Tim Ferriss' latest book. Mm -hmm. I haven't read his latest book. Listen to his podcast and you'll have read his latest book. All right. I've listened to his podcast. Sometimes. So basically, that's it. Because oh, basically, he what he did up. was he, oh, took he took it up. The interview. The Titan, Titans? Is that the one you mean? Yeah, these tools, tools, tools of Titans. Oh, yeah. Tools, tools of Titans. Yeah. yeah. So basically, it is. I thought it's he had a newer basically, one. Yeah. No, it's basically yeah. just All of his did the interviews, yep. had them transcribed, uh -huh. edited them a little bit, a little bit of polish. Mm -hmm. Boom, we got a buck. That's true because the, it's not a flow of like a story. It's a bunch of stories right. together. Interesting. Right. Huh. Uh -oh. I haven't read the book and then <laughs> I can see the wheel spinning. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So this was uh, awesome. What else, what else do you have any other um, things that we should know or what's coming up or how, how to find you or what? Well, the easiest way to find me is to go to David Pizarra, P I S A R R A.com. That's David Pizarra.com. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me or just my email, David at Pizarra.com. And if you're looking to do some more with digital media or digital marketing, you know, you want to talk about podcasting or publishing, give me a call. I'm at 310-666-9852. That's my mobile phone. Right. So you might get me or you <laughs> might go to voicemail, but I'll call you back. Cool. You can text me if you want. That's always a good way. Yeah. Have you noticed you text more? I text. I did a whole, like I bought an iPad Pro yeah. and I was looking at like the data. Yeah. I don't use my phone anymore for talking. I, right? It's I, all text. It's amazing. It is. And then I did call somebody. I was texting, texting, texting. And finally, I just called them. And they're like, hello? What are you doing? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, that's what... Because 
it's in one time, if you don't really talk on the phone to people at all, yeah, it's very strange communication. It's mm -hmm. different because you're the pausing or you're not really sure what the tonage is because... But see, that's where I think we... I, I think we need to go back to that because the communication yeah. is so much better yeah. than reality. I like agree. Tone and intonation, the pause, that weight, like, oh, I just hit a nerve there. <laughs> that's important stuff mm -hmm. if we're going to maintain our relationships. Mm -hmm. So Agreed. Um, but one of the things I also do is I do a deep dive weekend with people. We'll What's it go called? A deep dive weekend. Okay. And we'll spend like eight to five in a hotel conference room. It's like usually one-on-one. -on -one. And it's, let's talk about what's holding you back in business and where to go. And at the end of it, of two days, you're going to walk out with a pretty strong business plan and know where you want to go. And then three months later, I come back and we do a deeper dive weekend. I'm doing one of those next weekend with a friend of mine. Nice. And the first time we walked out and got him, he got a new idea and the business model built out. And now we're implementing it and it's just really taking off. It's that's so amazing. cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. You, Yeah. So you're. But again, you're, that's just taking the skill set that I have. It's marketing, it's analysis, it's business marketing, business planning, putting it all into one thing with a little bit of, you know, let's get into some of that mucky emotional <laughs> stuff right. that nobody really wants to talk about and figure out how to clean it up and move right. forward. Right. That's awesome. So it's, it's dual to like get rid of the X without it being like an intentional get rid of the X. Exactly. Because then people probably would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. David Passara, thank you so much. My pleasure. All right. Thanks, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed listening to that episode. And again, please rate and review if you did like this podcast episode or any of the other ones. Please go to iTunes, download, rate, review. I appreciate that very much. Just Forking Around Podcast. And again, I am Debbie Salzberg. My handle on Instagram is at Forking Podcast. My website is justforkingaround.net. And I am so excited to have you on board here with me on the Just Forking Around Podcast. And I look forward to seeing you on the next show. <laughs>